Hello, everyone. Um, we're just going to talk a little bit more today about latitude and longitude and how that affects climate change throughout our globe. So just a very quick reminder. Um, yesterday, we talked about latitude and longitude. Latitude being our absolute location. Um, we talked about how planes, how that that's where they know where to land, where if they were landing, um, if we told them on a grid system, they could theoretically land anywhere in this system. But when we use latitude and longitude, that gives us an absolute location, a spot where they can stop and pinpoint and land. Um, it gives us that opportunity to be exact throughout a very large global system. So um, latitude being that horizontal side to side lines. Remember, these are parallel lines that never touch. Um, these latitude lines are, are points side to side. They separate our globe into a northern hemisphere and a southern hemisphere down below. And they split right at our equator, our zero degrees mark. Okay, So everything below that equator, the middle of the earth, is our southern hemisphere. And everything above the equator um, above that zero degrees mark is our northern hemisphere. So all these degrees along the top would be labeled in the north. So it would be like 50 degrees north. And then everything to the south, like this one, would be 60 degrees south. Okay. Um, lines of latitude, again, go side to side, whereas our lines of longitude go up and down. So these are also parallel lines um, until they hit the very point of our North Pole and our South Pole. Here's our zero degree mark. This is known as our prime meridian, which we'll talk about here in a second. But our lines of longitude split our globe into an eastern hemisphere and then a western hemisphere. So right here at our prime meridian, down the middle, everything on this side is our eastern hemisphere. So this would be like 60 degrees east. And then everything on this side would be our Western Hemisphere, so this would be like 80 degrees west, okay? Our prime meridian is what um, the longitude line that cuts right down the middle. You can see it here at the zero mark, um, and everything east is our eastern, and everything west is our western. So the prime meridian is the one that goes from our North Pole to our South Pole, whereas our equator is the one that cuts right down the middle, okay? It goes side to side. All right. Here we go. So with that, we're going to talk today about climate, specifically climate, okay? So it's important to remember that climate is more than just the weather. It is a region with specific weather conditions and patterns. You can live in the same climate space, meaning you could predict what the weather would be like during that time. But um, before that, it would just be whatever that specific condition would be in those regions or in those areas. For example, we live in the Midwest, so everywhere in the Midwest has the same type of weather predictions. We could all predict what similar weather patterns would be. Whereas if you went up to the North Pole, those weather patterns would all be very similar as well. We're going to talk about the different kinds of climate zones. So there's five different climate zones. The first one is polar. Polar climate zones are very cold and very dry all year. So those would be like your North Pole, your South Pole, um, Antarctica, the Arctic Ocean, all of those. They're very cold. They're very dry all year. They never warm up. They're just always constantly freezing. Then you have your temperate zones. So your temperate zones are mild winters and mild summers. Um, so these are a little bit more like in between. It's never really too hot or too cold. It never gets too much of one way or another. That's what that mild means. It's always just kind of like a constant. Then you have your dry, your dry, dry zones. Dry, it is hot all year long. This is when you get closer to the equator. It just never warms up. It's always constantly very, very dry and hot. You have your tropical, which is hot and wet 
all year. So these are like your tropical rainforest, those types of areas. And then you have your continental, which is cold winters and mild summers. So if you see on this slideshow, it's got these labeled in different colors. So let's take a look at our map based on this. So our first one that we talked about was our polar zones. Remember our polar was um, our northern, our North Pole and our South Pole, which is kind of hard to see down here um, because of the way the globe was tilted forward. But your polar zones are your very, very north and your very, very south, okay? Then the next we had was our temperate that was in our green. So that's right here in the middle. This is actually right where we live. We live in a very temperate zone. Um, temperate being that mild winter and mild summer. It's never like too, too freezing cold or too, too hot in the summer compared to some of the other places. Now, as you get closer to the equator, this red, you can see that it's always very hot, 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 dry, um, but it does have that mix of like the tropical rainforest type vibes. Um, and then right above that is when it's dry, like the Sahara Desert. So if you've ever heard of like deserts and it being just very, very dry, dry area, this is where that zone would be, right above the equator. And then finally, we have our continental. Our continental is split. Remember our continental being very cold winters, but kind of mild summers. It's colder winters just because it's right below that polar region. So it's still very cold winters, but the summers tend to warm up a little bit more because you're getting closer and closer to the equator. So the closer you are to your poles up here, the colder and drier it's going to be. And then as you get towards your equator, which is closest to the sun, which you'll learn about in science a little later this year, the closer you get to the equator, the more dry and hot it becomes, okay? So we're gonna take a look at some pictures and guess what climate they are. As you're doing your Ed Puzzle, make sure you're making your predictions before um, we give away the answer. So here is our very, very first picture. It is very dry, dry like the Sahara. So is this a polar, um, is this a polar region, a temperate, a dry, a tropical, or a continental? Make your pick. And this is a dry region, yes. So if you're looking back here, that's anything in the yellow region is that dry, dry region that you're going to be using, okay? So on your map, when you are creating your, um, your islands with your teams, if you want your climate zone to be a dry, this would be about where it falls, either the 20 degrees north or about the 20 degrees south, okay? So these would be closer to like your tropics of Capricorn fall right in this dry region and tropics of Cancer, which fall in this very dry region, okay? That was picture one. Now picture two, we've already used dry, so we know that that can't be it. This is a rainforest type area, okay? What do we think this one would be? They get a lot of rain, it's very lush and green, and it's very hot all the time. This would be tropical. So again, our tropical is going to be right there on the equator in red. It is closest as possible to the sun year round. So it's always very, very hot and very, very wet, okay? All right, now we can't use dry or tropical. This one, it's very mountainous. You can see some of the snow caps here. It's green but I bet they have very cold winters. This is continental, our continental. So if you remember, our continental, it's got those cold winters, but it's just mild enough in the summers. It never gets too hot. That's that purple zone right here. So if you want your climate on your island to be more mountainous, more continental, this is about where you would fall, either at 60 degrees north, or right around, you can kind of see where the purple's coming in at the bottom at 60 degrees south, okay? All right, next up, we know it's not dry, tropical, or continental. This is very cold, very dry, year-round, constantly. Never warms up. 
This is our polar region. Good job. So our polar region, remember, is right at the very top of our globe or right at the very bottom, even though you can't quite see it on this map. It's your North Pole or your South Pole, and it falls right at that um, hundred or that ninety degree mark at the very top, which is right here and there in this region. Okay, always very cold, always very dry. All right, and last but not least, this one is our temperate region. Our temperate is very, very much like what we live in now. It has mild winters, mild summers. It never gets too incredibly hot, too incredibly cold, even though sometimes in the winter and summer it feels really hot and cold to us. It's nothing compared to the farther north you get or the farther south you get towards the equator. Um, so all of our temperate regions look very warm and lush and green during the summer. And then in the winter, we do get that snow that's never too, too much, okay? So today what you're going to be doing is you are going to be um, filling out a worksheet. It says in the winter time, in the five major climate zones, you need to dress these people based on what they would be wearing and justify your clothing options using your knowledge of climate zones. So remember, this is in the winter time. So if I have my polar region, what would I dress somebody who lives at the North Pole in the winter time? And you would dress him up, okay? Temperate, remember this is very much like where we currently live. What is something we would wear? Tropical, remember in the winter, even though it's tropical, what would somebody in a tropical climate um, wear if it never gets too cold? Then you have your dry, okay? So the dry, remember, being like the Sahara Desert. It never rains. What would someone like that wear in the winter time? And then your continental, okay? So your continental is just below that polar zone. What would someone like that wear in the winter? And then finally, I want you to dress up this last person for what they would wear in the summer, and pick one of the climate zones and tell me what it is and justify your reasoning as to why that person would wear that, okay? So that is your activity today. I hope this helps, guys. Um, thank you so much. Remember that this is an ass this is, um, assignment, this Edpuzzle was for a grade, and so is this worksheet that goes along with it, okay? And this will all go on your end of first quarter grades. Have a great afternoon.